This is the beginning of our new unit, which your textbook, Chapter 6, calls Chemical Composition, but which I simply call the mole. What is a mole? Well, it's a metric unit, and it's a unit that tells us something about how much of a certain substance we have. The specific textbook definition says a mole is how many carbon atoms there are in 12 grams of carbon. And do you think somebody actually massed out 12 grams of carbon and counted it individual atoms? Heck no. Atoms are way too small. To count. They did it with some crazy uh, different ways, complicated ways. But um, what you do need to know is that one mole of anything equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that substance. The mole is also called Avogadro's number. Okay, it's named in honor for an Italian scientist. And it's kind of an, the analogy I like to use is just like one dozen of something means you have 12 of it. And that dozen could be a dozen eggs, a dozen marbles, a dozen shoes, a dozen people. In the same manner, a mole is a counting unit. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something that you can count. It could be anything again. Um, we use it for atoms, molecules, formula units, particles. Um, but it could be a mole of marbles, it could be a mole of shoes, the same thing, except that wouldn't be very practical, would it? All right, where did that crazy number come from, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? Well, there's actually reasoning behind it. Um, back in the 1800s, when chemists were starting to learn about the atom, and they discovered the proton and the neutron, and they were so infinitesimally small, um, they devised a new mass unit, you may or may not remember, called an AMU, atomic mass unit, and a proton and neutron were both equal to about one atomic mass unit. Well, Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, is the actual conversion factor between grams and AMU. And so when we're talking about individual molecules and atoms, we will be using the units of AMU. And when we're talking about a quantity of a chemical that we can actually see and mass and do things with, we'll be talking about grams. All right, just kind of for fun, how big is a mole? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? That's 23 zeros after the six. I don't even think we can visualize that large of a number. But imagine if you had one mole of cans of soft drink. So if you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd cans of soda, that would be enough to completely cover the entire surface of the earth and then piled up high on each other, extended up a distance of 200 miles. Unbelievable. Okay? So, contrasting that, if we had the same number of molecules of water as we did of those cans of soda, if we had one mole of water, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules, that would only fill up about one tablespoon. So what does that tell you about the size of molecules and atoms? Unimaginably small. Okay? So, Basically, chemists work with moles of substances so because then they have enough of that substance to, is substance to be able to see. In part one of mole conversions here, we will be talking about converting from particles to moles and from moles to particles. So the first thing I want you to do is understand what we mean when we say particle. Well, it could be one of four things. It could be an atom, um, like one atom of iron, one atom of carbon. It could be a molecule. Uh, remember, a molecule implies a covalently bonded compound. It could be a formula unit, which is really just a molecule, but it's for an ionic compound. Or it could be an ion. 
So when we refer to particle, we are referring to one of those four um, substances. All right, so for example, you, you got to be a little bit careful with the units. If you are talking about a mole of mercury, okay, you must then realize that mercury is simply an atom, okay? Okay, so then you would be talking about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of mercury. On the other hand, if somebody started talking about a mole of hydrogen gas, you would hopefully remember that hydrogen gas is a diatomic, therefore it is not a single atom. It is actually a molecule. It's a non-metal, so it's a covalent bond between the two hydrogen atoms. So you would be talking about um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen. Likewise, or in a similar vein, if somebody said they were talking about or dealing with sodium chloride crystals, you um, hopefully would then realize that sodium chloride is ionic, and therefore the units would be formula units. All right, so let's talk about actually doing a unit conversion from particles to moles. And remember, again, when I say particles, I'm talking about atoms, molecules, formula units, etc. All right, we are going to use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, as a conversion factor. And we will, throughout this chapter, be building kind of a road map with mole in the middle, and it'll have um, three branches three roads coming out of it. And the first road we're going to be talking about are converting from a mole to a particle or from a particle back to a mole. Remember that particles can be atoms, molecules, formula units, or ions. Okay. All right, let's start out with a sample problem. How many molecules are in 0.360 moles of water? Well, in order to work this problem, you've got to think back of what you know about dimensional analysis. The steps in conducting dimensional analysis were first to start with the given information and put it in the upper left-hand corner of a T-chart. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's our given information, 0.360 moles. Here's our t-chart, so we have that in the upper left-hand corner. And step two was then put the conversion factor um, in the second block of the t-chart and arrange that conversion factor so that the units in the denominator match the units of the given information, and therefore those units will cancel. And we will end up with the new units of molecules. Well, this simply becomes um, a math problem. Um, it's probably more safe at this point to multiply out the numerator and get an answer, which would be 2.17 times 10 to the 23rd divided by and what you get in the denominator, multiply out the denominator, which is just 1. Okay, so our answer is 2.17 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So we have converted from expression that has units of moles to an expression that has units of molecules. And we've done that by using Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. Let's try another one. What if you wanted to convert from a particle, in this case formula unit, to moles? That's kind of going in the reverse direction. We started before with moles and went to particles. Now we're going to start with particles and go to moles. Well, to work that one out, again, we put the given information in the upper left-hand corner. We have Avogadro's um, number as a conversion factor. But in this case, we have formula units in the denominator so that we can cancel out formula units. In other words, what we're saying here is there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in one mole. 
And now if we multiply through by the numerator, it's 2.21 times 10 to the fifth times 1, or simply 2.21 times 10 to the fifth, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now you've got to be careful with your scientific calculator that you use the double E key. If you are still insistent on using the caret key, um, then you're going to want to make sure that you put parentheses around your numbers. But you, the correct answer should be 3.67 times 10 to the minus 19 moles. If you get an exponent that is not minus 19, you are using your calculator wrong. Um, please, it is so much better to use that double E key. Or you may have an EXP exponent key in its place. That is it for lesson one in the mole unit. And coming up next is converting moles to mass or mass to moles. Okay, so this concludes converting mole to particles.